Now, in this part, then, we know already that f of x equals x to the 4 minus 4x minus 8. And we're told that f of x can be written as x minus 2 all multiplied by x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c. And we're asked to find out what these values of a, b and c are. Now, there's two ways that spring to mind to be able to do this. And I feel that the quickest method, but I'll leave it up to you, is by algebraic long division. Um, the other way is to expand the bracket and compare coefficients. Now, what I'll do is I'll do both ways for you. I'll do the method that I prefer first of all, which is algebraic long division, and you can compare the two methods. For algebraic long division, if I'm to get this factor here, x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c, I would need to divide f of x by x minus 2. f of x being x to the 4 minus 4x minus 8. OK, so if I'm doing that, let's just do it over in the margin here. We'll just draw a line down here, enough room to be able to do that. So what I'd need to do is to find out then what this value is. I'm going to divide x minus 2, we'll just do that, x minus 2 into, OK, x to the 4 minus 4x minus 8. Now, I haven't got an x cubed term, so when you're doing algebraic long division, always fill out terms that you haven't got with a 0. So in this case, I'm going to write plus 0, no x cubes. I've also got no x squared terms, so I'm going to write no x squared, and then minus 4x minus 8, minus 4x minus 8, OK? If you're unsure of algebraic division, by the way, just go on my website, you'll find tutorials on algebraic long division. OK, so first of all then, we start off by saying, what do we multiply x by to get x to the 4? And that's got to be x cubed, and we put that up there. Multiply x cubed now with x minus 2, and you would get x cubed times x is x to the power 4. x cubed times minus 2 is minus 2x squared. Sorry, x cubed times minus 2 is minus 2x cubed. We subtract to find out what the remainder is. So we'll just subtract there. And if we do that, x to the 4 minus x to the 4 is 0. So you could put a 0 there, I won't bother with that. Then you've got no x cubed minus minus 2x cubed. So that's plus 2x cubed. Bring down the next value. So if we bring that down, OK, you don't have to mark that arrow in, but I'm just doing it there just to show you that I've done that. That's plus no x squared. We start all over again. What do we multiply x by to give 2x cubed? And that's got to be 2x squared. So we put that up there, plus 2x squared. And now we multiply 2x squared with x minus 2. So 2x squared times the x is 2x cubed, and we write that down here. And then we do 2x squared times the minus 2, which is minus 4x squared. And again, we subtract to find out what the remainder would be. 2x cubed minus 2x cubed, that's 0. I won't bother putting that in. And now we've got no x squared, subtract minus 4x squared. So that becomes plus 4x squared. Now we bring down the next term, the minus 4x. Put it down here, minus 4x. And again, we start all over again. What do I multiply this x by to give 4x squared? Simply 4x. So put plus 4x there. And we do 4x times all of x minus 2. 4x times x, 4x squared. 4x times the minus 2, minus 8x. We subtract to find out what the remainder is. And we get 4x squared minus 4x squared is 0. Then we have minus 4x minus minus 8x. So minus 4x minus minus 8x gives us plus 4x. So put that there. Bring down the next term, 
the minus 8 and we start again. What do I multiply x by to give 4x and that's going to be plus 4. And if we multiply 4 with x minus 2 we get 4x and 4 times minus 2 is minus 8. And that's looking good because we would expect to end up with 0 when we subtract, leaving us with no remainder, saying that x minus 2 goes exactly into this, showing us that x minus 2 is a factor of x to the 4 minus 4x minus 8. So what I can say now is that this is equal to x minus 2 multiplied by what we have on the top here, our quotient, x cubed plus 2x squared plus 4x plus 4. And if we compare this now to what we have in the bracket here, you can see that the a, the coefficient of x squared, must be the 2, so we can see that a equals 2. If we compare the x term, we can see that the b must be the 4. So we have b equals 4. And finally, you can see that the constant on the end, c, compares to that 4. So c equals 4. So that's the way that I would do this. But I did say that there is another way, and that is that you could expand this bracket and compare the coefficients. So I'll show you that method now. We'll just rule that off, OK? And we'll start by saying that f of x then equals, OK? And we're going to expand this. Now this is going to be quite long. We're going to multiply all of the terms in this bracket first of all with the x. So if we do that, we've got x to the power 4 plus ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx. So that's multiplying through by the x. Now we've got to multiply through by the minus 2 to each of these terms. So we're going to have minus 2x cubed and then minus 2ax squared minus 2bx. Looks like we're running into this red line, so we'll just get rid of that a bit. Minus 2bx then, and then we've got minus 2 times the c, so minus 2c. Now what I'd want to do is group this up so that we have our x to the power 4 term. Now we need x cubed terms. So I'm just going to write plus and we've got an ax cubed. And what else have we got? We've got a minus 2x cubed. So we can write that as in a bracket a minus 2 with the x cubed outside. So we create one term here out of these two terms, an x cubed term. Now we go on to the x squared terms. We've got a bx squared and we've got a minus 2ax squared. So we can group those together by writing plus and then in brackets b minus 2a and then x squared on the end. So we've got the 1x squared term. As for the x terms, we've got a cx and a minus 2bx. So we can write this as plus in brackets c minus 2b and put an x on the end there. As for the constant, we've just got the one term here, minus 2c. Okay, so we've got our quartic then, okay, because we've got a power 4 here, and we've got to compare this to what f of x was up here. Well, we can see we've got an x to the 4 term, that's fine, but there was no x cubed term, and yet we've got an x cubed term. So what I would expect is that a minus 2 would have to be 0. So we have no x cubed term. So if we, we just say here, compare coefficients, that's the values in front of any term, OK? Compare coefficients of, and we'll just say x cubed here. Right. What do we basically have? Well, we have a minus 2 equals 0. No x cubed. So, therefore, a is going to equal 2. And that corresponds with this, so that's looking good. 
We could do the same for the x squared term. Look, we haven't got any x squared term up here. There's no x squared. So if we look at the x squared terms, the coefficients of x squared, we've got b minus 2a. Well, that must equal 0. Well, we know that a equals 2, so therefore we have that b minus 2 times 2, which would be 4, would equal 0. And from this, if we add 4 to both sides, we get that b equals 4. Same answer here, no, that's good. And to get c, I can either look at this coefficient, c minus 2b has to equal minus 4, and I could substitute my b value in, but I think it'd be easier to just look at the n term, the constant term. So if we just look at the constant, okay, what we've got here is that the constant term on the end is minus 8 and we've got minus 2c. So we could say that minus 2c must equal minus 8. And if I divide both sides by minus 2, we're going to end up with therefore c equals minus 8 divided by minus 2, which is 4. And again, that checks out with what we have here. OK, so hopefully you can see both methods and uh, take whichever one you prefer. But as I say, I always prefer algebraic long division.